What's up in life, my family? I was recently watching Willie D live with Arian Foster as his guest, and he began to talk about the national anthem and what it stood for. When I got to the league and the whole Kaepernick thing uh, kept, kicked off, I was with it initially because of his original premise. Damn, has it been that long? Yet? It was 2016. Damn. Yeah, it's been man, them years. Almost, almost, yeah, almost 10 years, bro. Damn. <clears throat> but um, when he did that, I I I, I understood his his premise, and uh, had a conversation with him. Had a conversation with a lot of cats across the league, and most didn't want to do it. They were like, "We don't want to disrespect the military," um, which has nothing to do with the military, but. Uh, propaganda going propaganda, mm -hmm. and so. But when you dig into the history of the national anthem, it was written by a uh, racist, and it was written by, and it was written with three three verses, and one of the verses is talking about what do they what do they do with a a, a, a caught slave. Yeah. And where is the band who so vauntly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out of a foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the harrowing and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star spangled banner and triumph doth wave ere the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm like, fuck this song. And like to this day, like you, a lot of a lot of folks get offended when you say that, or that you know, that you should feel a certain way about America and its songs. So I, I will never stand for that song again. We can write something better than that shit. That shit sucks. The song sucks. The words suck. Yeah. I'm never standing for that shit again. Yeah, I heard that Arian Foster would never stand for the national anthem again. I second that motion. I second that emotion. Because the national flag, that were well, the national anthem, and its author suck monkey nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> it sparked my interest in the national anthem. And I discovered a real interesting anomaly when studying the subject. Besides the fact that the national anthem didn't become the national anthem until 114 years after it was written. The national anthem actually started off as an old British drinking tune called the Anacreonic tune. Stolen, then words put over the tune. Francis Scott Key proceeded to make it his own. And then America made it their own. Typical. The Anacreontic Society. It was basically a gentleman's club. What was this society about? Drinking and women and music. That was it. So would they have been like swaying and drinking? Of course. Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, comes from the British, the same people we got our independence from. Absolutely. So our national anthem is based in large part on what is in essence a drinking song? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And I discovered a real interesting anomaly when studying the subject. I'm going to start off with the point that the song has a verse in it that says, Land of the free, home of the brave. What is a brave? We know the word brave as an adjective, but what do we know of it as a noun? And brave, in fact, is a noun. What exactly are they speaking of in terms of definition? We're going to look at the word brave here. And we'll be referring to the Wikipedia for the purposes of showing you anyone can edit the Wikipedia and put uh, whatever edit they decide. In this case, we see Braves stated as Native Americans, a Euro-American stereotype for Native American warriors. According to a couple of sources, Carl Wallman's 1994 World Dance, the Language of Native American Culture, 
posts that it derives from the Spanish term Indios Bravos, courage, warlike, maybe savage Indians, who were contrasted with Indios Reducidos, or Indians who had been reduced or subjected to Spanish authority. It's interesting that it does not appear at all in the 17th century primary documents from the Plymouth colony. And the reason I think it was not included because the term was used for derogatory purposes, mainly in the research that was done. That's what we see. The word brave was equivalent to the word nigger today and then changed into a positive connotation by the Indians or Braves themselves. But it was applied in its meaning to be derogatory, to be almost a slur a reduced Indian, someone who had been subjugated. He's whooped. We got him. He he with us, boys. He a good old boy. Good old boy Indian. So that's what the Europeans use the wording for. And as usual with any slur, sometimes one nationality may use it and the other nationality has no idea what the hell they're talking about. For instance, eggplant. What is an eggplant? Italians use eggplant to describe dark people. So there you have it. Some big moolin y'all stand over there. You see that black guy over there at the line getting some candy? Yeah, you're all right. Now he's about 6'5". Five. I'm 5'2". Five <laughs> I ain't no big guy, all right? But I'm Italian. Watch this. You watch this, all right? You heard what I said, Mooley, pay for my fucking candy. <laughs> or I'll kick your ass. Oh, you just saw Rocky. <laughs> Look, little Italian white man. Many references to brave men where it's clear that these brave men have special status. In one tribe, they serve as soldiers, religious police, a curious society of young men trained to fight in battle. Two Indians introduced themselves to the expedition as brave men. They wear special clothing or accumens. They perform special dances. They serve as emissaries of the chief and paint their horses as well. Lewis and Clark journals say that the Indians introduced themselves to the expedition as brave men. Did the Indians know English? <laughs> what conclusion can we come to? Had they learned English or did they already know English? Which I think was the case. The English language is an extension of the indigenous Native American culture. The Aboriginal indigenous Indians, the Niji, already had their language. And I believe their language was stolen. And they introduced themselves and they could speak English as well as Lewis and Clark. William Trent's 1763 journal at Fort Pitt from the French and Indian War when both sides use Indians as proxies and he doesn't use the word at all. Warrior, yes. War party, sometimes. More often just party a word equally used to describe European groups and men, but most often the tribe. But Lewis and Clark's journals, 1803 to 1804, have the term all over the place. Many references to brave men. In the 17th century primary documents from the Plymouth Colony, 
war periods, mostly they just call them Indians. And if referring to warriors, his chiefs, his men. The word brave being used by Francis Scott Key's racist poem makes total sense. He was actually using a racial slur, is what I believe, by calling the Indians braves, land of the free. It's the land of the free, which he considers himself and other Europeans that have uh, got, up, got out of their indentured transportation sentences. He calls them, it's the land of the free, the land of the free, but it's the home of the brave. It's not the land of the brave anymore. It's just his home, but it's our land. And I think that Francis Scott Key was pointing this out in almost every verse, every other verse, he points out land of the free, home of the brave. And I think this is quite intentional. Keep in mind that large amounts of white people were being enslaved in the 17, 1600s, all the way up until the 1800s by way of transportation. And transportation isn't what you think. Transportation is when you caught a case, you were sentenced, and instead of getting hung or doing life 20 years, you were sentenced, you were given the option of transportation instead. And transportation was them shipping you from Britain to America. And that lets you know how perilous that trip was. Because you could possibly die on the way. And it would be very treacherous. So they just shipped you out and said, hope you make it, man. You know? And it was a win-win because they're getting rid of criminals. And they're getting paid for this transportation. Because when you arrive, you have to work the transportation, the cost of the transportation off. So you understand that was the indentured slavery. That was the type of slavery a lot of people got caught up in that were not black. A lot of white people were imported here by way of transportation, trying to get, trying to get rid of them cases and work them off. And that's something they're not going to teach you in history school. That's something I had to learn. Shots out to Dane Calloway. And shots out to Willie D. Live and Arian Foster. For clicking on the switch, if you will. To let me delve into how deep the deception even in this scenario the national anthems, they would have you to believe that when you hear the word slave, you're only thinking about black bodies, so-called black bodies, dark people. But in fact, white people were a big part of the slavery system. They were probably transported on skiffs and little ships more than they reported that we were. When in fact, there are no slave ships to show all of these millions that they claim to have shipped over as slaves, enslaved people. If you even look at the word slave, you see Slav in there. And what is a Slav? You see the word Europeon. A Euro is a denomination of money. A peon is someone of low valuation. So Euro peon means someone that was 
low in the way of the euro. They didn't have any money. They were peons. Think about the wording. Put it all together. Ha ha say, can you motherfucking see? <laughs> By the dawn's early motherfucking line. What surprise we have at the twilight. Let's got them gleaming. <laughs> Whose brush stripes and bright motherfucking <laughs> Fucking stream <laughs> and the rock gets red, my fucking glad. The bus press, they are up in the motherfucking air. They prove through the night that the goddamn flag was still there. How say does the head star spangle? Motherfucking banner, yeah, and we Oh, the lee and the three <laughs> and the whole of the motherfucking brain. <laughs> Most didn't want to do it. They were like, we don't want to disrespect the military, um, which has nothing to do with the military, but uh, propaganda going propaganda. Mm -hmm.